So we have an event coming up that is the greatest astronomical event you will ever see. In fact, it could be the best moment of your entire life. We have an eclipse coming, but not just an eclipse, a solar eclipse, but not just a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse. This is the coolest thing you will ever see in your life. I am calling it the big one because in astronomy circles, this is like our Super Bowl. We get so excited about total solar eclipses. It is the best thing in the world and in the universe and it's coming. April 8th, 2024, that is almost here. I've been waiting for this for a long time. And so we are gonna be talking about the total solar eclipse coming up on April 8th and I'd like you to stay up all night with me. Well, welcome to All Night with Dean Regis. I'm your host, Dean Regis, and we are gonna be exploring this event. And I know, I am like almost giddily excited about this thing. This is a eclipse that I've been, had circle on my calendar for decades. Uh, now there was a big total solar eclipse in 2017, and this one in 2024 is the next one. And then there's one coming after that, 2044 in Montana. Yeah, I mean, that's 20 years. So this is why I have to encourage you. Whatever you do, April 8th, you have to be ready to see this total solar eclipse. It is going to be awesome. And so now we do have eclipses from time to time. We had one just back in October. This was called an annular solar eclipse, not a total solar eclipse. It was only part of the sun was blocked out. So it's like that picture up there where the moon is too far away from the sun to block out the entire thing. So you get this like ring of fire eclipse and eclipse chasers want to get in the best places to view. And so there's kind of a narrow path where you can see this annular ring of fire eclipse. Uh, and I was looking at all the maps and places where to go, Oregon, Utah. I was like, nah, Roswell, New Mexico. That's where I want to be. I want to be there with all the aliens and the alien enthusiasts and the people with tin foil hats on. Yeah, it, it's really like that in Roswell. They're pretty nuts. And so I got a great view of that annular eclipse. It is really cool to see. And I got this video that I took just with my phone attached to a filtered telescope. This was at the end of annularity where you can see this little ripply marks. This is the sunlight that's coming through the valleys of the moon. So you got all these moon mountains that are blocking out this light. And you get these things called Bailey's beads, those little uh, sparkles of light that are coming around the edges. So this is something that I got a little taste of back then in, in October, but April is gonna be a whole different ball game where we get the whole sun blocked out. So here's the lineup that we're looking for. We've got the sun on one side, the earth on the other side, and the moon right in the middle. And I know there's a lot of problems with this uh, graphic, like the sun's way too small, the earth's way too big, they're too close together, but anyway. I understand, in, real, in reality, they're spread out quite a bit more, but this is the lineup, and you want the moon to be just between the sun and the earth, and it's a very fine spot where you have to be for this to work out. So uh, we can see partial solar eclipses a little more often, maybe about every two, three years or so, where you look out where the sun is and a little chunk is missing out of it. So this is at sunset with the moon blocking out part of the sun as it goes down but we wanna get it totally blocked out. And this is super rare for this to see. In the United States, uh, you know, there's gonna be about three of them in our lifetime. We've got uh, the one that just happened in 2017. Well, you know, seven years ago. Uh, the one in, coming up here in a few weeks. And then if you miss this one, August 12, 2045, that's the next one's gonna go across a big swath of the country. So it is very rare. You gotta be in this right place at the right time to see it. And the precision on this is so good. So if we wanna put the moon and the sun next to each other, well, here's what they look like. Well, I better move over to this side. So you got the sun there and you see that little dot there in the corner? That's how big the moon would be next to the sun. So yeah, but of course the sun is way farther away and the moon is way closer. And so if you put them at their distances, you got these two right there together. They appear to be the same size in the sky. That is weird because around here, that's, well, it's the only place in the solar system where you have that. This is the only place where the sun and the moon would look like the same size in the sky. And 
I do have to apologize for my bad PowerPoint skills, but here's my animation. And when you get them all lined up just right and the moon slides in front of the sun, what do you get? A total solar eclipse. Very, very cool. But again, you have to be at the right place at the right time. So I'm part of a nerdy slash adventurous group of people called Eclipse Chasers, where we would travel to exotic and maybe less exotic places to be in a place where you see totality. So lunar eclipses, solar eclipses, that whole kind of thing. Uh, and so you got to be in the place where the shadow happens. And the shadow is very small, usually about 80 to 100 miles wide across a part of the globe. Uh, and it goes in this long kind of line. So you have to be in that path. And so this is a view from a satellite looking down at the shadow caused by the moon onto the Earth during a total solar eclipse. The uh, shadow here is going down into Antarctica. And so a group of people, I was not one of them because I was like Antarctica, I don't know. It's, uh, it was going to be a really low eclipse, but it worked out for the people that made it to Antarctica to see it. So that was the pathway for the eclipse chasers to get to. And it was so low in the sky that, uh, you know, a person could eclipse the eclipse. Uh, but man, what an adventure that would be. So I haven't gone quite as far as Antarctica, but I did go to uh, the Mediterranean to see a total solar eclipse in 2006. And this is, was a pretty incredible journey to go out there, see some of the great sites in the ancient world, to see the Acropolis, uh, to see islands in the Mediterranean like Santorini. Uh, but then on eclipse day, uh, we're on a boat, everybody's got their glasses, because you need those glasses to look at the partial stages of the solar eclipse. So you're kind of watching the stuff and waiting. And it takes about an hour to go from a partial eclipse to a total eclipse. And that hour is long. That is for sure. So you got to kick back and relax and just take it easy and make the time go as fast as possible. Uh, there's a couple ways you can look at this safely when you're looking at uh, eclipses. So those glasses are a great way to do it. This is what I was doing as I had a pair of binoculars and you put your back to the sun and let the sunlight come backwards through the binoculars onto the ground. So don't look through the binoculars, let the light come down to the ground. You can actually see the crescent shapes as the eclipse progresses. You can do this like with pinholes too, and even like leaves, the sunlight coming through the leaves would do that as well. So that is definitely something you can look for before the totality happens. But this is how dark it got uh, at uh, one in the afternoon. This is kind of the sky color. The sky turns like this dusky, purpley silver color, and some of the stars will pop out in the middle of the daytime, and the temperature drops 15 to 20 degrees really quickly. And so uh, this is a video uh, showing, well, what's happening. And uh, this is a video taken at that eclipse trip, and I'll play it here. And uh, basically what we're seeing here is we have our guest, uh, I guess our celebrity guest is on the PA system. His name is David Levy. He was a big time astronomer, uh, and he was like the celebrity play-by-play -play guest giving the talk about the eclipse. And so He's giving you instructions, telling you to look for the shadow coming in on the waves because uh, you can actually see the shadow of the moon coming at you. And then when it's time, you look up at the sun without your glasses and it gets so dim that the stars pop out and the people go crazy. So when this happens, the, the sun's actually kind of small in the sky. It surprisingly doesn't take up very much space. So you look up there and the, you know, this moon is blocking out the sun. You look up, there's a perfect black hole up there and with these wispy clouds coming around it called the corona of the sun. Now, one of the big things that I have to stress to you all is if this is your first total solar eclipse you're going to see in April, don't bother taking pictures of it. I got this advice to me when I went to this eclipse because this was my first total solar eclipse. And some of the astronomers, they, I thought they were a little arrogant. They're like, hey, Dean, don't even bother taking a picture of the eclipse. And I was like, well, why? It's like, well, because number one, it's fast. You don't want to waste a second looking at your phone, looking at your camera, taking pictures. And number two, any picture you're going to take is going to be way worse than the picture I'm going to take. I was like, ooh, all right, attitude here. And uh, they're right, because this is the pictures that they took. 
compared to the picture that I was going to take, which was going to stink. So they got to share all these pictures. So let other people take pictures because you want to soak in every single second why you can take it in with your eyes because that is the best part. You don't really need a telescope. You don't really need binoculars. You just take in the whole situation. And then you get the pictures from the other people that are wasting their time taking pictures. So this is a picture called the diamond ring. It's the last bit of sunlight coming around the moon. And that's when it plunges into darkness there. Once that last little bit is gone, that's when you can actually look at the sun safely without any glasses or anything. And the corona comes on out and each eclipse has its own different shape to the corona. And this is caused by the magnetic field around the sun. And this is the only time where you can see the corona with the naked eye. And this lasted uh, in... In the Mediterranean, this lasts about 3 minutes and 53 seconds. And then, yeah, 3 minutes and 53 seconds, sun pops back out the other side. And it's all over. Yeah, that's too fast. That is for sure. And uh, so people do ask me, they say, well, hey, uh, so you went all the way to Greece for 3 minutes and 53 seconds? I'm like, yeah. Well, and I got a vacation. I mean, that's the other thing. So fast forward to August 21st, 2017. So that was the last time we had a total solar eclipse in the United States. Maybe some of you got to see that. Maybe you got to travel to it, to either Kentucky, Tennessee, or even farther out west. Uh, so these are some of the pictures that I took. So since this is my second one, I uh, took my own advice. And I was like, you could take a few pictures. And I just took a few. I didn't uh, take as many as I could have. Uh, this is me with my little telescope and the filter on the end of it. And that camera, oh my gosh, that is an old camera. Anyway, I, I think I'll do better this time. Um, but it was pretty cool to get these pictures of this. But like I said, if it's your first one, don't worry about pictures. Uh, you know, get just take a little, a couple handheld ones. But otherwise, it's going to be very quick because the path that it's going to go on here in the United States this time on April 8th is going to go from Texas uh, through Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Uh, New York and up through the Northeast. So you want to be somewhere along that path. And then you can see up to about four minutes of totality. So four minutes of time where the sun will be blocked out and you got to soak up every second. Well, with the total solar eclipse coming, I know there's a lot of questions out there like where do you got to go? How do you see it the best? And so my Hey Dean question for today is, hey Dean, how do I safely look at this total solar eclipse? Super important because you don't want to mess around with look at the sun any day of the year. Anytime it's sunny, you don't want to be staring at it. Eclipse or no eclipse. So you have to take special precautions and have the right equipment. So you don't want to take chances. If you're not sure about it, don't use it. Always use kind of professional stuff. Now, uh, there's a lot of people are saying, well, you can use like a pinhole, like you put a pinhole on a piece of paper, let the sunlight come through and it makes a little shape. Uh, I, I call that the lamest method. So if you want to do it, go ahead. Uh, but I, you know, it's kind of lame in my opinion. Uh, you can make up your own pinhole anyway, just like put your hand really close together and the sunlight coming through will be your own pinhole and you'll make a little crescent sun. It's kind of cool to do. You can interlace your fingers. You can make a crescent suns on the ground too. Uh, light coming through the leaves will do this. So yeah, that pinhole and a piece of paper thing, I don't know. I mean, if that's all you got, but uh, I'd go for some other stuff. Um, you can, yeah, Ritz cracker will work too. So I mean, you can just do that too. But uh, so this is the, the glasses. They're called eclipse shades or eclipse glasses. These are the ones you want to use for direct viewing. And so there's usually two different types. There's the type that has the uh, the, just the black front here, and then there's a type that has a shiny front at the top. So most of the new ones have the shiny front to them. Uh, if you have glasses from the last eclipse in 2017, they may be good, they may not be good. They do degrade over time, so I highly encourage you to test them out, get a really bright flashlight, look through them to see if there's any imperfections, any holes, any weak spots. If so, throw them out, get some new ones. But if you don't have any, now is the time to get them because they are going to be in short supply. Hey, wait a second. AstroDean.com, you can get your glasses there probably. It's my website. Yeah, you could probably get them there. Anyway, you can also use something called a sun funnel. This is if you have a telescope, 
Uh, you get a funnel from AutoZone that can, uh, with a little bit of uh, work, can figure onto the telescope and you can project an image of the sun. Uh, I'm going to put a link to the comments in the comments about where you can get information on how to build one of these if you have your own telescope. This is like one of my favorite ways to look at the sun safely. It is really cool called a sun funnel. Then you can also get solar filters that go on the end of telescopes or cameras. Uh, these are going to be harder to get right now, that's for sure, because they're probably all sold out. Uh, but if you have one or if you know where to get one, you just put it on the front of the telescope to block out the light before the sun gets in the telescope. That's really important. Any filter that's on the back of the telescope, super dangerous. Put it on the front before uh, the light gets in it. You can also take pictures. You can put a filter on the front of your camera. You could get a big filter on the front of your giant camera, the big welder's mask. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet set up, but uh, the pictures weren't that great. But you can do that with your cameras too. Uh, put a filter on the front of it and take pictures directly. And oh, uh, or yeah, you got the filtered scope. It's good to get a mount. So uh, that video that I took of the eclipse in Roswell, this is the mount that I was using. I just put my phone in there, attached to the telescope where the eyepiece is, and you can do pictures, video, you can adjust things, you can do stop motion, slow motion, all that kind of stuff. Highly encourage it. These uh, mounts are pretty cool and they work really great with telescopes or binoculars. So thanks for tuning in to All Night with Dean Regas. I hope you enjoy a little learning more about the solar eclipse that's coming when? Yeah, April 8, 2024. Uh, I'm going to have some more information in the comments uh, with links to maps of where you got to be, when you got to be, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so check that out in the comments. And uh, if you like the show, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with other people because this is going to be huge. This is like going to be the event of the year. Well, you know, in my circles. Uh, so definitely get out there on April 8th. Oh, by the way, uh, if you, this is a work day too. That's a Monday. Put in your notice now. Get out of work now. Put it in there. I also have a link in the comments where you can have an astronomer note that gets you out of work that I wrote. Uh, it doesn't work very well, but you can try it anyway. Look for that. But definitely, you want to get off of work April 8th. Be free. Go out to totality. Don't stay in cities. Get out to places where you can see this really, really good. So I hope you had a good time with this. And I hope you get out there on April 8th and have clear skies. And thanks for staying up all night with me.